If we have a case where all the things we've done have still left the lingering of a torticollis, even though it may have had improvement, sometimes it... Now you can imagine, if I forced you to walk around like this all day, it would probably be really uncomfortable. You'd probably get irritated, you probably wouldn't be able to adapt to stress very well, you probably would cry a lot. Now for many of our children who have been diagnosed with torticollis, that is just the reality. There's a spasm of a muscle called the sternocleidomastoid, which comes from about right here and comes up to the cranium right here. And that muscle, for many different reasons, has come into spasm and locked the head into this position. Now, there's lots of different things that you may have done to try to help your, your child with torticollis. You may have done physical therapy. You may have seen a pediatric chiropractor. You may have done none of those. You may have done all of those. You may have done all different types of things. Now, for many different reasons, there can be specific distortion patterns of the actual cranium that can cause this torticollis to be unresolved, but sometimes is missed by other providers. Now, because this muscle attaches right into here, into a part of the cranium called the mastoid process, which is part of the temporal bone, you don't need to know that, there's not gonna be a test. What can actually do is cause this rotation and distortion of the cranium and actually can lead to misshapenness, which is part of the reason that oftentimes with the torticollis, we have flattening of the back of these bones right here. Now, the issue there is, is that if we have a case where all the things we've done have still left the lingering of a torticollis, even though it may have had improvement, sometimes if we don't address both the spine, the musculature, and the cranium, there's this cycle that tends to repeat itself. What we should do is make sure that we have the proper alignment and motion of the individual cranial bones alongside the spine and muscular system to actually allow that to be able to correct. This is especially important because these bone distortion patterns actually come in and form the back of the palate as well. So if we see this rotation, this change in cranial shape and dynamics due to a long-term long corticollis, they can also impact things like difficulty breastfeeding, turning our head from side to side, and because of a difficulty getting an appropriate latch can even lead to issues like reflux, constipation, other digestive issues as well. Now I'm here to tell you a little bit of a secret that no one wants you to know. It's that oftentimes these challenges we're, we're told that kids will grow out of. And as somebody who works with children every day, I can let you know firsthand that kids don't really grow out of these issues. What they do is they grow into different ones. So I 100% recommend that if you have a child who used to have torticollis or has a torticollis, even if it's 90%, if they currently have one, or even if they have one that's 90% better, but they're still lingering, you should be checked by somebody who's not only a pediatric chiropractor, but also does craniopathy as well to ensure that not just the alignment of the spine, the nervous system are doing great, which is the most important, but that there's no cranial distortion patterns as well. They're gonna to lead to this cycle over time.